continue on our journey today, and let me talk about your next lab, which I, I posted a little bit before class. And um, we'll talk about what it is, and then we'll talk about the skills that you need to know to get to that, and, and where we're, what, what we have to, what we have not yet talked about. Um, I mean, I think that's always good, sort of, uh, you know, for any sort of project that you're doing. I mean, not even like thinking about a class project, but, you know, take inventory, you know, uh, take a mental inventory of what you think you need to do and what part of it seems easy, what part of it seems you like, you sort of have an idea of what to do, and what part you have no clue whatsoever how to handle it. I think it's good to sort of take that mental inventory beforehand. All right. Your next assignment is to do this. Your, I think lab six it was, was to create a page, was to create a database and a page that showed all the courses. <coughs> you didn't have to show sections, but all the courses. All right, that was lab six. Lab seven, we're gonna add to that three pages. And that sounds like a lot, but it's really not that, that, that much. We're gonna add a page that will allow you to search by department of the class. So you put in the department and you get only classes for that department. That, sh that ought to be very similar to what we've done in the Little League example where we, we selected the sport and showed all the leagues for that sport. So you're essentially adapting that. The other thing that we're going to do is you should be able to put in a name or part of a name of a course and show all the classes that match that. For example, if you put in web, it should match mobile web development and introduction to web development and anything else that contains the word web. All right, and we'll talk about how to do that. All right, so essentially it's two flavors of what I would call a parameterized query. In other words, your assignment for um, that's due today is just a plain old query where you're just showing everything in the table, everything that matches, uh, or everything that's in a table. Here we're adding a parameter to it. In other words, we're not uh, always showing everything. We're showing things based on some selection criteria. So based on a parameter, all right? So in one case, the parameter is the department, and the other case, the parameter is um, a string, the, 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 the name of the course. In both cases, you ought to have a link on this page. I think I've had David for... I don't know how many classes. I don't think he's ever showed up on time. I've been in a couple of classes. Yeah, I, I don't. You know, I, I don't know. I know. I know David is in is in like sort of the design side of things. I don't know if their clocks are like five minutes fast over there in that building or or what. But that's okay. That's okay. I just I just had to say it. All right. It's these guys. These guys create a confrontational mood. No, we were fine and all that. Yeah. Well, well David, today he rushes. He's sweating and all that. It's not like he's just like lolly dolly and he runs here. <laughs> well, then maybe this will be cross references a phys ed course too, you know, the, the dash over. All right, at any rate, there'll be a link. The, the course name should be a link that will take you to a page that will show all the sections of the course. <coughs> So, in taking inventory of this, we'll see that there's bits of it that we know how to do now, or we should know, or we've covered now, and there's bits of this that we have not yet covered. What are some of the things that we're going to cover? One of the things is, again, we're going to review parameterized queries, because both of these are parameterized queries. In other words, you put something in, and you get things that match that criteria. We did one exactly like this, 
So we might talk about it briefly. This we'll talk about, but this is really similar to this, just a teensy bit different. All right, and we'll we'll talk about the differences of that uh, going forward. The link we have not done anything with to create a link that pulls up a page that has a list of things that belong to the thing that we clicked on. In addition, but or, or however, even though we have not created the link, we have created pages like this, believe it or not. This really is just another kind of parameterized query, right? We're going to pull up all the sections that are associated with the class, but we're not going to be getting the class from a form control. We're going to be getting it from somewhere else. So it's still a parameterized query. That is, it's a query that returns different stuff depending on the parameter we feed it. We're just going to be feeding the parameter coming from a different place. All right. The other thing that we will discuss will be joining stuff, joining tables. All right. In our examples that we went over and in your lab, uh, we've shown simply everything from a single table. We haven't joined tables together. And I think we talked a little bit about how you join tables together, but I don't think we've seen an example of that. So, review on parameterized queries and maybe seeing different flavors, different examples of parameterized queries. Joining tables and the ability to create a link will be the three things that will be our focus today and next time and should put you in a position where you can do the assignment. All right, questions. All right, let's pick up and let's look at, let's look at the example where we left off last time. download the example from last time. I'll spend a minute reviewing what we had before we go into these new things.
If we go and run this to refresh our memory, we have the ability to choose the sport in the drop down. And that will be used to populate the grid view with leagues that belong to that specific sport. This is what I mean by a parameterized query. In other words, the query that populates this grid over here, this grid view, gets populated based on a parameter. So I change it to softball. I get a different result. So I change it to baseball, and I get a result. If we're going to take inventory of this page, what we have on it is we have two visual components, and we have two data sources. Remember, the data sources, my rule of thumb, the guidelines I like to have is like just describe it in English, describe it in a natural language. And that will help you see if it's the same data source or a different data source. In, the, in this case, um, the drop down is bound to a data source that shows a list of all the sports. So if I was going to describe this data source, I would say that that data source represents a list of all the sports. All right. That's different than this data source, which represents a list of all the leagues for the sport that I select. So the English explanation of what is contained in those data sources or what we want contained in those data sources should be enough to show you that those are different data sources. Now, the one thing that they share is they share the same connection string. Remember, you only need to create this, the connection string once, assuming that you have one database. And then you, that, that will get stored in the web config file. And if something changes about the database, you can just make the change there. All right. Let's look first of all at the grid view for, I'm sorry, the, the data source for sports. It uses a connection string. I wrote my own SQL statement, and it simply says select sport ID, sport name from sport, order by sport name. Remember the importance of an order by. You should not assume that you're going to get the data back from the database in any particular sequence. If you want it back in some specific sequence, you need to put an order by clause on it. All right. Bay is about as simple of a select statement as you can get. Select indicates that we are doing a query. We want to see the results and, and pull some data from the database. So that's what select means. Sport ID and sport name are the columns that we want to retrieve. A shorthand for that, in this case, since I think there's only the two columns, is we could put an asterisk there. And an asterisk would designate all the columns in that particular table. <coughs> we have the word from, and then we have a list of the tables that we're pulling from. In this case, it's simple. We're only pulling from one table. And then lastly, we have the order by clause. So select is a constant. It will always be select for a query. List of the columns that we want, separated by commas, no comma after the last one. The word from, a list of the tables, and then we have, a, you know, typically a select statement will at least contain this. And it's likely to have other clauses as well, like in this case we have an order by clause. Questions about that one? Pretty straightforward. That then we bind to the drop down. And remember, when we bind it to the drop down, choose data source, we're associating the data from the data source with that visual control. 
So it's components, and typically for showing data on, uh, from a database, there's going to be the two components. There's going to be the visual part of it, how we want to visually show it, and then there's going to be the data itself that gets populated from the database. In this case, with a drop-down, we have to specify what data source we want. We have to specify what field do we want to display, and we have to specify what field we want to be the value of the drop-down. And if you remember, the display it indicates what the user is going to be seeing. So it should be something descriptive. In this case, we're displaying the sport name. Whereas the value should be more than likely the primary key of the table. All right, because that's what all my SQL statements and all my programming is going to need to do its job. It is going to need the actual sport ID to do the query correctly. And if we did this and looked at it, we'd see those options were created and would see between the option tag would have the description, the value attribute of the option tag would be the sport ID. All right, now for the leads, if we configure a data source, same connection string, right? Because we're connecting to the same database. Our select statement looks a little different though. This part of it looks sort of the same. Select and we list the columns. League ID and league name. From league, where sport ID equals question mark. Order by league name. This is something we're going to see common in these dynamic web pages. We're going to see SQL statements that are partly hard-coded, partly parameterized. All right? In this case, almost the whole thing is hard-coded, right? We're always selecting the league ID and league name. It's always coming from the league table. We're always comparing the sport ID with something, and we're always ordering it, sequencing it by league name. What is different? What is there a parameter for? What gets filled in at runtime? The specific value of the sport ID that we're interested in. So, and where are we going to get that? We're going to get that from the dropdown. When we write this SQL statement, we simply put a question mark in saying it's going to come from somewhere. Later on, we specify where it's going to get filled in from. Now, we're going to see this even when we do inserts, updates, and deletes, right? If we do an insert into, the, into a table, we're going to insert values into a table, and we're going to get the value, or we're going to, uh, we're going to get the values, the specific values that we're going to insert, we're going to get from somewhere on the page, probably a text box or something, all right? So we're going to see this sort of theme repeated over and over again. Whereas the queries and the SQL statements are going to be parameterized. That is, they're getting their values from somewhere. So if we want baseball, then that question mark is going to get filled in by a 1. If we want softball, then that question mark is going to get filled in by a 2. The next page is where we say where that parameter gets its value from. And there's going to need to be one of these entries for every parameter. In this particular case, there's only one parameter. So there's only one listing in that parameters table. We have a choice of where it's going to come from. We have, it's going to come from a control. It could come from a cookie, could come from a form, could come from a profile, a query string, a session variable, or route data. Coming from a control means it's coming from another ASP.NET control that lives on this page. And that's what we have here. Which control? It comes from that dropdown. All right. So what that is saying is take the value of the dropdown, 
the value being the primary key of the sport table, and use that as a parameter in this SQL statement so that we pull up the, the leagues associated with that sport. We have a little test that we can run. All right. When we are done, and then, and then uh, in addition, what we do is we bind that. We bind the grid view to the visual control. In this case, it's it's um, in this case the visual control is the grid view, and we we bind that to the data source. We then have other options that we can set. We we have the ability to to enable sorting. We can edit those columns to make the, the headings more descriptive. By default, it's going to give you the database column name as the as the column name of the table. You probably don't want that because you're probably naming it in an abbreviated way that doesn't necessarily make sense for users. So you probably want to go in and edit this and make it understandable. All right, that's a summary of what we did last time and a review of that. Do you have any questions about that? All right, let's change this a bit. Let's change it so that what's missing from our grid view is the age of the person, uh, the age age group of the league. All right, we're, no, we're nowhere showing um, what age group it is. We, you know, we can select a baseball league or softball league, and we can see a list of those, but we can't see, um, you know, what what age group it's for. All right, so let's go and add that. All right, and I'm going to go in. I'm going to look at my database and see what those columns are called, just so that I remember. All right, in the league table, age range ID is the column. All right, so I can go and and go and add to my SQL statement, age range ID. In this particular case, I have to change two things. I have to change the SQL statement, the data source, and I have to change the visual part of it too. Why? Because I wasn't I, was ne I have never up till now selected the age range to be included. So it's not in the data source. So I can't just go in and put it on the visual side of it. I have to go in and say, all right, age range ID is something I want to pull from the database. So I put that in. And I can test it. All right. Let's make sure I saved it and didn't hit cancel or something. Yeah, I did. Smart enough to know that I have changed something about the data view or, or the, 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 the data source. So it's asking me if I want to regenerate the grid view. And I can say yes or I can say no. If I say yes, it will go and recreate it. If I say no, um, it will leave it as it is. And I can go and add it. I'm going to say yes. And there it went and it, it recreated it. And so I'll have to go in here and if I want to, I'll have to go in and edit this, edit my columns <coughs> again, re-edit them. Still seems easier. Still, what still seems easier than what? To, to let, let uh, Visual Studios do it for you. Yeah. 
Maybe. Where are you going to find out if it's easier or not? In the lab. The lab is your place to experiment, remember. <laughs> All right. So now we run this and ought to work. But what does age range of two mean? I have no idea. All right. Did you mess up? No. No, it's just returning. No, it didn't, the, didn't mess up. It, it returned the ID, which is what we set it to do. In other words, because of our normalized database, we only store the keys to link tables together. So in this case, I am correctly showing the key, the value of the key, which is 2. So it's correct. The problem is, is that is not going to be very meaningful to someone from the outside world. So if they're looking to sign up their kid for a league and there's a list of leagues, they're not going to know which, which age range that represents, which is the league. All right. Well, they, who knows? They might think that. So what we need to do is we need to join the table together. So we're going to talk about two different ways to join tables. One is the way that you probably did in CISS 143, and then there's another way beyond that. How, in layperson's terms, how do you join the tables together? Well, you take the key of this table and look up the description in this table. So, in this case, I'm going to pull the age range ID out of here and match it up with the age range ID here and say that this is a 12 and 13 year old league. All right. So let's go and write the code to do that. I'm going to go back and open the database again because I'm going to need the column names. Okay, description. Can another where club? Well, we can add it to the where clause. That's the way that we did it in, the way I do it in CISS 2, uh, 143. There's only one where clause, remember. Occasionally I'll see students say, you know, add a second where clause. There's only one where clause. All right? And in this case, we want all these things to be true, so we'll connect the parts of the where clause together with an and. All right? So. I'm going to put in, I want the description I'm now involving another table so I have to include that as part of the from clause and then I have to specify how I am matching up the age range in the league table with the age range in the age range table. So, I'm going to do it wrong at first. In other words, I want the age range ID to equal the age range ID. What's wrong with that picture? Doesn't know which tables. Age range ID, which age range ID am I matching up with? Which age range ID? Oh, yeah. It's be particular difficult if there were more than two tables involved and more than several age range. So, in this case, I have to specify the column's full name. All right? A column's full name is the table name, dot, and then the column name. So, I have to say, match up the league age range ID and the age range age range ID. I have to do that because if I don't do that, the database is going to be very confused about where I want the age range from, the age range ID from. So I have to specify that I want the one in this table to match up to the one in this other table. Again, the column's full name is the table name and the column name. 
Now, why didn't I have to put the table name in front of these? Because these column names are unique for this select statement. It's just like if I were to say Alan. Everyone knows who I mean, right? Because there's only one person named Alan in this room. I don't have to say, you know, Alan, last name starts with a P, pl whatever, Plasky, right? Plano. Plano, yeah. I don't have to specify the full name. Now, are there two people in here that have the same first name? Is there another Mike in here? Without looking at the... Odds are probably good. Yeah, Mike's a real common name. And I get that all the time when I'm shopping, you know, out shopping or whatever. I'll hear, hey, Mike. And immediately I turn that head. And I do that. When I do that, I deliver a long lecture about databases. All right? And I tell them, look, this is just like a database select. Because there's a good chance that there's another Mike around here, you should specify the full name. All right? Just like you specify the column name. So I give, like, the reverse of this, 180-degree reverse of this lecture. If there were two people, if there was a second Allen, uh, you know, former Minnesota Viking line, lineman Allen Page, if he were in the room, if I said Allen, both of them would look at me, right? And it would be ambiguous as to which Allen I meant. So I would have to say first name and last name. I don't have to do that with these because there's only one column name description between these two tables. There's only one column named league ID between these two tables. I could still put the last name, just like I could call any of you by your full first name and last name, you know, but I don't have to. I could say Don, and everyone knows who I mean. Or I could say Don Jenkins, and everyone knows who I mean. In both cases, it's clear. So let's go and let's, let's change this. I'm going to go into the league's <coughs> data source. All right. I'm going to test it. That looks correct. And that looks correct. All right. Now let's go and run this. It's already running. It's already running, so let's stop All it. All of the, the, the button police are out. <laughs> she was quick to... They're already running it. <laughs> I'm so angry. You're not ready for running it. Oh, what did, I, what did I do wrong? You didn't here? do it for baseball. No? You didn't do it for both of them. You didn't set the SQL statement for both. Drop do I need to set the SQL statement for both? Yeah. Yes. Because they're both pulling different things. Well, this drop down is still just going to be the sport, right? I still want to see all the baseball leagues or oh. all the softball leagues. Now you want to fix the SQL data, the data source on the other one. No. All I need to see is a list of sports. Age range doesn't come into play at all on that data source. What I need to do is I need to go in and change the um, grid view, right? Because I changed the data source. And I think, I, I, I fear I hit cancel again. I did. Uh, that was my third guess. This is getting painful. It's they did put like cancel in the wrong it. spot, to be honest with you. Well, I'm sorry I'm not perfect, all right? Okay, so I'm going to say yes. And now it shows this, all right? And it adjusted it for me, all right? And it also changed everything. And it also back. changed the names back, so we can go in and reset these. <coughs> Make sure you get this right the first time. Yeah, yeah ideally you get this right the first time. You can also say no, and then you have to do some manual tweaking. And depending on the, on the specific thing you change, the manual tweaking could be easy or it could be hard. All right, 
so now we should be back in business. This is getting painful. Now we got the cell phone police. <laughs> All right. So now we're showing that. A common mistake. If you don't join the tables, what happens? Nothing. You just get the ID from the other right part. Yeah. Let's go in and let, let's change the SQL statement and let's make predictions about what's going to happen. If, you, if I forget to put that in. If I just have this. It's going to find everything with age range ID. And it, it'll, anything between those two tables will find age range ID to match age range ID. It's not adding anything specific to it. I would, okay, I think you're moving in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, in this case, it would be simple. But if you had like eight tables on there and all eight tables had age IDs, it would draw in everything that has age ID that matches age ID. The match this part. Yeah. I think you're warm, but I don't think you're, uh, you're you, you nailed it exactly. We haven't how to match up the legal range table, right? We haven't specified that. We removed that. I cut that section of code out. So what's it going to do? It's going to match every league with every age range. So it's going to think every league is associated with every age range because we haven't limited and say how they're linked together. So if I went in here and If I went here and removed that clause, part of the where clause, and I run this, <coughs> notice what I get. I get leagues a couple of times. Why? Because I haven't specified how to match up the one with the other. Therefore, it does every combination of table A with table B. And again, the more tables you had, the worse it would get. So this is a tip-off. If you ever run a query like this, whether it be in ASP.NET or elsewhere, and you get a lot more data than you'd expect, like multiple times the amount of data that you would expect, it's probably wrong with the WHERE clause. You're probably not joining the tables together correctly. And it's doing a cross product. So this is showing every league with every age range, because I haven't specified why, you know, how to connect them. All right? So that's a, that's a classic. If you see this, then that's your first thing to check. So I'll go and put that back in. And we should be back in business. So now we're back in business. We've specified how to join those two tables together, and therefore, um, we're not going to we're we're not going to have the difficulty that we had before. All right. Now each league is properly associated with the age range to which it belongs. Let's look at the other way to do this. The other way to do this is, we'll configure data source, is to use a join statement. Yeah, 
actually I'm going to go and click Query Builder here. All right, and it actually took my query and adapted it to the other way. It added to the from clause an inner join clause between age range and the league table on the league age range, age range ID equaling the age range, age range ID. The purists would probably say this is a better way to do it. I'm not terribly picky one way or another. The advantage this way has to do it is it's easy to implement what are called outer joins. An outer join would be if there was a league that had no age range. Now, I think in our database we made that impossible, right? We made that a required field and it's a, and it's a, it's a foreign key. But if there were some things that may have been, uh, maybe an optional field. For example, maybe our player table um, has an optional key to the team table, right? Because when someone signs up, they're not assigned to the team, assigned to a team. All right, or a new kid comes into town and they register, but they're not assigned to the team yet, a team yet. So we might, if we wrote it as an inner join between player and team in that case, it would only show players that were assigned to a team. If we wanted to see all players, regardless of whether they were assigned to a team or not, we could make an outer join. And we could say, I want to see all players, and oh yeah, the ones that are assigned to a team, I want to link them to their, their team. The effect of this will be the same. I mean, it will run the same. No. <coughs> Just coded two slightly different ways. Now, you can extend this thinking, all right? I join two tables together. And to join those two tables together, I had to create a link between table one and table two. As you add tables, you have to add the links, right? You have to go between, uh, you know, so if you had table one, table two, and table three, you'd have to somehow join table one to table two, then table two to table three going to have to create like a chain like that. So for every table that you add in, or you know, for every, uh, if you have n tables in your select, there's going to be n minus one parts to the join, all right, to join all the, all the tables together in a chain. Other questions about this? For the age range, did it automatically uh, make it a clickable thing in the jig? Yes, because I that that's something that you that's something that you associate with the entire grid view. Oh, okay. I said that it, it it's sortable, and that made all of them sortable. All of them sortable. I don't know if you can overrule that. You can only make it one specific one. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if you why you'd want to overrule that, but. Case, at, for some reason, a couple of the leagues are missing numeric values, and it goes from 1 to 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Because for some reason, we're missing league 1 and 2. Unless I am missing something, it does not look like you can exclude individually items from being sortable. All right. Could you, if you would have not even added that table and then created the SQL statement, would it automatically create the table for you then? No. You still have to throw a table in there? You, you, yeah, you have to create the table. But it'll just automatically update it for you. Repeat that last after, part? Because after you're done with the SQL statement, it detected that it wasn't able to 
complete it within a table of parameters that you set, because it was only two columns, you needed a third column. And then it said, yeah, I'll do it for you, but then we had to go back and change the IDs for each column header. Uh-huh. Uh, that was my question. It'll automatically update it for you, but it won't create it for you. No, it, it, this will not create a table. Okay, so you have yeah. to manually create the table. You have to manually the create the table. Right. But it'll automatically update it for you. You just have to go back and change the, the column IDs. Because when you, when you put in that SQL statement, you get a third column, it added it automatically, but it reset it basically. Well, well keep in mind... Uh, what what I'm what I might be hearing is a little bit of confusion. It's automatically it's not automatically changing the database when I go and change the select no, statement. No, no, just the table it's just the changing table. the grid view. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. The grid view. Yeah. So it can it can change. You can make changes and you can set the grid view and all that. Well, then, but creating a table is then that's, that was what my question yeah, was. It was that if I write the SQL statement, will it automatically create my grid view for me? Like if you deleted that right now and, made, and rewrote the SQL statement to create that grid specifically, uh -huh. would it automatically, when you were finished, create that grid for you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I think. Like if you deleted that right now, All right. and then you went and finished off your SQL statement, it would automatically create that grid for you. Alright, so I go in and I create another, a new grid view. And I choose a data source. Yeah, it, it created it. Yeah, and you have any columns you need it right. that. And I can enable sorting, and then I can go in and edit that if I wanted it to be different. Or just don't. You don't have to go all the way out each time. That's just something I forget to click on the other one, and I have to go out each time. All right. <coughs> so that's joining tables together. wanted to look up, and I'm not, I'm not going to go and create the grid view and, and, and all this, but we're just going to talk about this. What if I wanted to pull up a player by last name? All right. But for fields such as last name and so on, a lot of times you may not know the exact spelling. Wild cards. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't believe the different ways Zellers seven letters like Sellers except it has a Z in the front. You would not believe how many different versions of spelling I get for it. A R S, E R, A R. At least four, right? So oftentimes what we do with fields like that is we allow for approximate searching. Like, okay, I want to talk to, um, there is a, um, there, there's a professor in engineering, uh, Dr. Pillen J.M., and his name is very long, but Dr. P-I-L-L, -L, and then there's a bunch of letters after that. So I might want to do a search for that. Let's talk about the SQL statement that we would use. Right. And let's talk about how we could write a query then without actually doing that. If you, someone wants to hit the lights. These are approximate matches or wild card matches, however you want to call it. 
And these come into play anytime you would do something where, um, like, the exact spelling or the exact wording could be in doubt. If you're looking for books in a library, for example, I may think I know the title of it, but I may not know for sure. So I might do a search, then pick two or three words from the title. And it may depend, it may depend on the exact situation, how we want the wild card to work. Let's talk about, all right, let's talk about in the case of a library. All right, famous book, A Tale of Two Cities. Is that the title of it? Or is the title Tale of Two Cities? Can anyone say with 100% certainty which one it is? A Tale of Two Cities. I'm pretty sure it's A Tale of Two Cities, but let's say I didn't know that. All right? If I did an exact match, in other words, if my statement was, my SQL statement was select star from book where Title equals <coughs> Tale of Two Cities. And the correct title was A Tale of Two Cities. That would not return a match. All right? Because an equal in a compare means equal. Now, one good bit of news is that it's not case sensitive. So I wouldn't have to get it precisely right if like the word two was capitalized or not. So SQL generally is not case sensitive unless you override some defaults and, and so on. So that's the good news with that. You don't have to be perfect as far as the case goes. But you do have to make an exact match. So really what I kind of want is I kind of want the title to contain Tale of Two Cities. All right, for example. Now, how can I do that? What's the way that we can make a SQL statement do an approximate match? Or think of another example. <coughs> my name is Zellers. Let's say you weren't sure if my name was spelled A-R-S-E-R -E or whatever. Okay, let's, but, say uh, let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the name starts with Z E L. You could do Z E L and wildcard. Okay. Extra. What is the exact syntax of that though? So I would say select star from faculty. Where? Where? Last name equals. Last name. Equals star. Z E L L star. Because you don't know how many is at the end. So the question marks for individual stars for multiple, right? No. This might work in Access, but this is not standard database um, coding. So we're not going to do it that way, even if it does work in Access. It's not, a, it's not an equal to do an approximate match, it's a like. That's all right, so in this case, I would say like Z-E-L-L, -L, and not an asterisk, but a percent sign. Don't blame me. I didn't make this up. All right. I think that's what Access does. Access thinks it's doing you a favor by allowing you to do the more standard wild cards, but that's not standard SQL. I thought the like statement you didn't have, but you could just put in whatever you think it is and it'll search for anything close to it. Do you still have to put in a wild card for it? Yes. Because. Oh, yeah, because this is us writing it. It's not doing like, this isn't in a search box or anything like that. This is just us writing out the statement, correct? I'm thinking of this in a sense of putting a name into a search box. And search well, let's talk about that next. Okay. Let's talk about that next. So, 
were last named like Z-E-L. What's the difference between last name equals Z-E-L percentage, last name equals percentage Z-E-L, and last name equals percentage Z-E-L percentage? The one with it before will search for random numbers before Z-E-L, and then the third one will search for extra letters before and after Z-E-L. Okay, so let's say we have, we've hired a new, I don't know if that's how you spell his last name, Mansell. <laughs> would, which one would this match? Second one. Oh, which, would that match? It would match the Zellers. That would match Zellers. Which one would this match? Manzel. Which one would this match? Both. both. Okay. In addition to matching both, it would match... Anything else with Z-E-L in it. Pretzel Man, a new superhero. <laughs> All right. It would match that as well because it's contained. All right. So, that's how we do an approximate match with strings. And that, that's what you probably should do for one of your pages where you're calling up by course, right? Because if you're doing a query on course, you don't, you know, what's the precise name of this course? Something like web database integration, but there might be a slash between web and database, or there might be a space, or I don't know, I don't really remember. So therefore, you might put database integration and let it pick out that. So let's talk about if we're going to do this query then. We're going to do this query um, as part of a SQL page, <coughs> or part of an ASP.NET page. So, what would we need on our page? Search box. Search box. Button. A button. And a text box. <coughs> or a, or a, a, a well, what we call it for the tables to go there. Yep. Right, a grid view. Yeah, there we go. So we have a text box. A button and a grid view. What else would we need? Clear button. We don't ever use clear buttons. What else do, uh, if, if, if anyone says that again, I'll go into a 20 minute tirade. Otherwise, you can go back and watch CISS 216 videos or Google Jacob Nielsen reset button or something like that. What else do we need? that we can't see? Data source. Data source, right. How many data sources do we need? Just one. Just one. Why do we not need a data source for the text box? When we did a drop down before, we had a data source for it, so why don't we need a data source for that guy? Because we're not populating anything. We're not populating anything from that. Well, that's just a free form field for us to type in. When we did the drop down, we needed a data source because we wanted that drop down populated by the values from a particular table. But in this case, we just want a blank text box, and whatever they type in, we're going to use that in the query. Okay, so what's the select statement going to be? Let's assume that we're select star. Star. From star. From star? From all of them. From every single table. Well, no. Okay, so <laughs> faculty, let's say. <laughs> maybe he's not a faculty member. Maybe he's a janitor. Where? Where uh, search box dot text. You're right. The value is going to come from the from the search box. But when we write the SQL statement, when we wrote the SQL statement for the league, in the SQL statement itself, did we put that the value is from the drop-down list? Question. We put a question mark uh, saying this is a parameter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So where last name equals question mark. Equals? Like, like. Like. It's like Facebook got a link. No disliking. 
Now, do we want to leave it at that? No. No. What do we want to do? What do we actually want our SQL statement to look like? Thinking in normal terms of searching for a name. How would you want that to work? If I type in Z-E-L, do I probably want to see Manziel? Probably not. If I want to see Manziel, I type in M-A-N. Oh, so you put the percentage after All right. This. So you would say question mark plus percentage. We don't put the question mark by itself. We have to show how we want to use it in the like statement, how we want to use that parameter with the wild card. So we we'll do something like that. You could, though, put a percentage plus question mark plus percentage? Yes. You wouldn't want to do that just to be on the safe side of things? I wouldn't want to do it in this case because if I think about, if I think about doing a search for names, usually it's like that person's, you know, Dr. George's name is Pill something. Uh, Don Huffman's name is Don Huff something. You know, people's names are so really weird nowadays. Yeah. Anesthesia. Well, you can't spell the person's name at all if you have no clue that you can't search for it. So you have to try something else. Okay? If you can't even get a few letters. Okay. Right. Uh, nobody going on dialysis without dialysis. Typically, typically you're going to know, I would argue, you're going to know the start of someone's name as opposed to, I'm not sure how to spell their name, but I know it has ABC somewhere in the middle of it. Probably not. That would be my guess. At any rate, that's what we would do. But it's entirely situational. As I mentioned before, if I was doing book titles here, I probably would do percent plus question mark. And if you really think in your particular case that it makes sense to use the, the, the wild card before and after, then use it before and after. It's not, you know, that's a judgment call. I would simply say that for names, it probably makes more sense to me that uh, you would know the start of the name, you wouldn't necessarily know the, the end of the name. All right. So, what's the next thing that we'll have to do <coughs> after we enter in the SQL statement? Test it. Well, we will have to test it, that's true. But if you remember back when we put a drop down in, when we put the drop down in, we put our select statement, select blah, 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 where sport ID equals question mark. What was the very next screen after that? What haven't we told? What it's the, linking together. What it, what, what where it? we're getting the value for the parameter. Yes. Right. So, we'll get that screen that shows a parameter and where we're going to pull it from. And remember, our choices were from the query string, from a form, from a, the option that we would pick from a control. And then, we'd have a list of all the controls on our page and we'd pick the text box as a control that we'd want our value from. To refresh your memory on this, I'm not going to do this example, but let me bring up the old example that we had to show you what that screen looks like. After we enter the SQL statement, when we click Next, that's where we get 
the ability to put in where we're getting the value from a parameter from. All right. So in this case, we would say control, and we would pick the, the value of the text box there. That parameter gets filled in from the text box. Now, let me ask you a question. We have a couple minutes left. Let's see if we can do this. Let's make this. No, let's just talk about this. Let's not, let's not actually do it. Right now we have this. Right now we have a drop down. We have a drop down that shows the sport. We have a grid view that shows the list of leagues for selected sport. And we have a data source for the sport, and we have a data source for the league. That's what we have on the page now. What would we have to do if I wanted to change this so that we could pick not just by sport, but a combination of sport and age range. In other words, I don't want to see all the baseball leagues. I want to see all the baseball leagues for 10 to 12 year olds. I want to pick by a combination of sport and age range. What would I need to do? What would I need to change? Add another drop down. Maybe. Number one, add another drop down. Add a second question mark. Okay. We'll, we'll put that one in the back burner. We'll say add another question mark. Put that there. What else do we have to add associated with that drop down? Need another data source, right? Data source age range. Because this is a list of all the age ranges that we've defined. So we need to add a age range in here, data source, Bind it to this, so this has the age range. And then, our SQL statement, right now it would say something like select something from league, maybe more stuff, where sport ID equals question mark, and to add the other question mark, then we would say then age range ID. Would that be an and? Mm hmm. So we want both <coughs> conditions true. We don't want to see everything as a baseball league or a league for 10 to 11 year olds. Can you, would an or statement allow one of them not to be included though? Because you could just look up age range or you could look up sport yeah, but you or want both. both. But you want. You don't always want both. If I wanted to, it would be more, it would be more involved if I wanted to allow them to be able to select by one or the other or both. Right. All right. Um, because I would actually not, I would actually have to change the where clause because if I only wanted to select by the lead, or by the sport then age range is not a factor at all in my select statement. So it should not be there at all with an and, an or, or anything else. It just simply won't be in the where clause. Okay. And if I want to select by both, then I would typically want an and between those because or doesn't really make sense within this context. And then, back to our magical screen that we saw a second before, we would get Instead of having one question mark on that parameter screen, there'd be two question marks. And we'd have to say, well, the first question mark gets filled from this drop down. The second question mark gets filled from that drop down. All right? And then we 
should be in business. Would we have to change the grid view? No. Why not? Because it's already set up to show ages and support IDs. And the information we want basically from the drop down is already set up to show. All right. Put differently, the visual aspect of this doesn't change. I didn't say anything that said I wanted to change the way what we're displaying for this. We're displaying the same thing. But it would still prompt you to change it though, wouldn't it? You just have to hit no at that point. You'd have to recognize. Well, it, it depends. It's smart enough to know what changes are important and what changes aren't. Changing the where clause really, from, from the grid view's perspective, isn't important, <coughs> right? Because we're not, changing, we're not changing what fields are available. We're simply ch uh, changing what rows are going to get selected. So instead of 10 rows, we'll get five rows this time. But we're still going to be displaying the same stuff about those five rows. OK. This is important stuff. I encourage you to practice this and to try different things with this and try different combinations. Even try some of the examples that I alluded to here. Um, that's part of the work of this. In addition to your homework assignment, take and try to take what I've sketched out and, and bring it to life. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to be able to link pages together so that if I were to click on a league, let's say, it would take me to a page that showed all the teams that belong to that league. That's sort of the next step and sort of the last thing that you need to know how to do in order to do your next assignment. So we'll pick up on that on Thursday. All right. See you at lab. See you at lab. Oh, it's not Thursday. Okay. It's been a tough weekend. We're, we're going with the default. So. I see if it was okay if I had like an extra day or so in the homework that's oh, yeah. due today. <coughs> I, just, I got backed up from being sick and now okay. I'm just trying to catch up All myself. Right, no All right, cool. Thank I'm you. I'm just trying to see what's on your hat. That's a flag though, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. the American flag. Oh, okay. I mean, it looked like it was, from a distance, it looked like it was like lines of text or something. Oh, no. It's a <laughs> <laughs>